Good morning. It's a little bit after 10 o'clock in the morning. And let's just do a little walk about through the garden. Things are still wet. It rained again for the third day in a row. And look at how much water. There's four or five inches of water in there. When I set my plants down in pots that have no holes because they're beautiful and decorative, uh, I have to check and make sure I, I drag them out. Well, these I, I just left out because I knew I was having rain. Those are those double pink proven winners. Well, let's see how the water feature is doing this morning. Bill's gonna give me the devil about this. He helped me with this last year. And I still haven't got the pump situation worked out. I had this filled up to the very, very top, uh, bottom of those rocks along the ridge. And it's dropped at least six inches over the last couple of days in spite of the rain. So I've started putting some impatience here in these little trays along the sides because they do well with their feet in water. It's one of those plants that um, do really well. I'd like to put some further back on both sides, but you know, I'm gonna have to get down into the pond in order to reach that. That's one, um, it's not really a design flaw, but my brother built this for me. He built it to be beautiful and it's almost impossible to get in there and clean it. There's just there's those two little places there where I can get on my knees. But it's, you know, it's pretty far down in there. So the lily of the valleys have died back. I hope it's not a permanent dieback. It looks like some sort of infestation of something or other. Jack in the pulpit is still coming along. The berries haven't turned red yet. But that's almost three feet tall, that plant. Okay, let's walk around here. Here's some impatience I planted directly in the ground. Some of them have come up. And here again, I had a uh, polka dot plant, a red polka dot plant from last year that I planted out here directly in the ground. And then I got a, like a six inch pot that had three of these polka dot plants, one in white, pink, and red. And so I replanted each of them in a pot and sunk the pot inside another pot in the ground, so it'll be easy this fall to pull them out. Now, these plants right here are going to town, about two and a half, three feet from this. Can you see this? This is supposed to be electroculture. It's a copper wire. And I don't know that it has made huge difference yet, but this polka dot plant has gone to, is, you know, twice what it was when I put it out. So we'll watch that. My brother's dream, the reason this is all cut out here, is my brother's dream was to put a waterfall up there where the cannas are and have it come down over multiple waterfalls and down to the actual pond. But you know, I know by that time I already five years, six years ago, I already knew that you know if if the pump fails and the water has to go to the lowest point, you gotta have a reservoir to capture all that or else you're gonna have flooding and lose all your water. Okay, so here here's another electroculture thing. And the coyas right here have done gangbusters. They've done what I really wanted them to do throughout the whole edge here of the coyas. And would you look at all those impatience? Those were all one inch high 
impatience that reseated themselves. And they came up after the first little bit of heat. And we had some heat that was in the 80s. All of a sudden, um, I'm seeing impatience everywhere. And I'm gonna leave some of these coleus go to seed to see if they will reseed themselves. But you see how these, these are not proven winners coleus. Well, I didn't want any that got two to four feet tall right here because I didn't want them to um, overshadow the hostas along here. But the trip in puny. This is why we love proven winners. So this is what I planted a couple of months ago. It's the same color of impatience. And I did plant them too densely. I knew I was doing that six, probably about six inches, but I wanted it to be a solid blanket here. And it sure is, they've tripled in height, maybe quadrupled. And here's this plant that we love. And this came back on its own. There's just, it's about at least three in here. You see that? And it puts out blossoms at every set of, st of uh, leaves. And there, there's the no-no bed. It's called the no-no bed because Larry was thinking about doing this, talking about it. Joy didn't want him to break up the grass up here, but she has fallen in love with it too. So you see an orange cold you up there. That's one of those proven winners. I don't know. It's called Autumn or something. Anyway, it's spectacular, isn't it? Oh, the hibiscus might be blooming. I see some red pink peeking through. We're going to have to go investigate. Oh, here's my coffee cups that we moved down here. And I pulled out a plant for a friend of mine. And I still haven't gotten the the Lenten rose here, the big bed of Lenten rose. They do really well for almost four months in the spring. Now these hostas that are planted all along here, you know, they make for the edging of beautiful plants, but he's using them to help hold the land in and hold the water in. So it just doesn't wash down the side of the mountain willy nilly. And the, the hostas, you know, look at how they're filling out. They're doing great. He did the same thing with this. I know this is Liriope or monkey grass, I think. It's not miniature monkey grass. And we planted all these little hostas along here. Well, they don't get much sun. So they're slow growing and we probably only lost a couple. But do you see how beautiful this moss is? This was largely um, naturally occurring here. And my brother went out in the woods and got these rocks and laid them in here. Now this is the best time to pull weeds right after a rain. They come out just as easy as they could possibly come out. So here's another of our Jack and the pulpits. Pulpits are gone. We're left with all these seeds. And they'll get bright red is it when they get ripe. And the birds will eat them. And I think they poop them out and that's how they spread throughout the whole garden. Here's more. We do have some things planted in here, a still be and I'm sorry, I don't know the names of all my plants, but we have some beautiful things that grow up in here. Okay, these were, were gifts, these, these hydrangeas, these three, and I didn't think these two smaller ones were gonna make it. Now here, I had these kind of propped up and they've fallen over with all the rain on the branches. Oh. 
maybe I'll get some of the sticks and The day lilies here really don't get enough sun. They get enough sun to do a little bit, but they don't really flourish at 10 over 10. Okay, here we are at the no-no garden. Oh, we love this dipped in wine colia. And this orange one is spectacular. Now here's our hibiscus. Would you look at all of the buds on this? And here it is, and it's a good five or six inches in diameter. I think I have three of these in here. Look at the buds. Both these plants have lots and lots. It's gonna be spectacular here another few days. Here's the third one. Okay. It's a little bit behind the other. This one has darker leaves. See what a little bit of, not a little bit, we've had a fair amount of rain, one and a half to four inches a day for the last three days in a row. And heat, the weather getting up into the 80s. And um, they're doing just fantastic. Okay, that's doing great. Oak leaf hydrangea. And the cannas are doing great as well. They've already, a lot of them have already bloomed and gone to seed. I want a whole stand of them in here. I did grow some from, um, seed in the house and then planted them out here in, in the spring about three years ago. So this is a plant that we're watching. It's growing out of the same area as the tree of that was last year. I don't think that's what it is. Look at this. Oh, here's some little flowers at the top. You see those? I'm going to have to use the plant app and figure out what this is. It's already taller than I am. Okay. The grass is still wet. My shoes are going to be soaked by the time I'm done doing this little walk. I wonder if this is what it looks like when it's done. They almost look like little buds. It looks like it might bloom again, but I don't think they have more than one bloom per stalk. That was spectacular about 10 days ago. Oh, this poor colia. The snails have gotten to it. I put out some more snail bait about three days ago. Oh, I hope this plant recovers. It's going to seed already. I don't know what I'll plant in there in the middle of summer if I have to repot that, redo that. So, you know, this is my new, new project. I think that these plants rise up out of the dirt. I don't think the dirt has settled. I suppose that's a possibility. Let's look here. Kind of. Now see, this is an example where it's created a baby. 
some sort of thing along the side. See that? And now it's another baby. I suppose I should cut that and move it someplace. But this one back here looks like it's five or six inches above the soil. I'm gonna have to get some dirt and go back there and, and, and investigate. We had some big branches that fell over here and I don't know why this one's all splayed out. I haven't had to turn the drip line on this season yet. We did have a, a, a about a seven week period in which we didn't have any rain and I had to hand water. I just hadn't gotten everything organized yet for um, setting up the drip again. Oh, look at this. Persian shield is doing just fine in my pots inside of a pot stuck in the ground. And those daisies come back every year on their own. Aren't they incredible? We like things that come back on their own. We're gonna end this by looking at the, the uh, chicken gizzard that I took cuttings off and pruned way back. Gosh, do you see how much water is in these pots? That's at least five or six inches. And this one, I didn't realize when I planted this New Guinea impatient that it didn't have a hole in the bottom. And it was overflowing with water and I had to tip it over and let it drain. So this is, I think this is snail damage. This is a Rex begonia that I just, I love these Rex begonias, but I think I'm gonna have to come in and cut it way back. We'll start over. And you see this area in front of my veranda does not get any direct sun and impatience didn't do well here one year i tried a couple of things they didn't do well so my brother makes boxes you know he uses these planter boxes and grows things in the greenhouse and he brings them out and they're already um you know well established i put snail bait in here but it's obviously not soon enough can you see all the holes in the... And I came out yesterday and I pulled off... Do you see the seed pods coming off of this ornamental kale? Well, they've already emptied out, but fortunately I had captured some seed, those seed pods a few weeks ago and put them in a plastic bag and they'd all fallen out of their pods and were at the bottom of the um, plastic bag. So this is where I was working. Again, I put more, more on there. So I, oh my God, look at how full this is. I didn't want this to be that full. That's all rain water. I only wanted about an inch and a half in here. So I'm gonna watch and see how quickly this, this roots, starting it in, in water versus sticking it in wet soil with the feet of, in, in a little bit of water to make sure that it stays good and wet, consistently wet. And because of the rain, this is overflowing. I might let out some of that water. Mm. And here's where I planted the ornamental kale. And I just put the seed pots on tight on top so I would know what it was I planted in there. Well, isn't that interesting? I usually do this for when I'm inside to keep the, the plants wet. And it really doesn't help matter that they're really, really wet here for a little while until the roots get going good. Well, this is the pot we cut way back. We left a little bit of growth on each stem to pull 
so that the sun would pull up moisture, water, and nutrition to those stems. And we'll see if they, 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 they fill out. But aren't those stems just so brilliant red? Plus the foliage is so red. I mean, uh, we have some coleus that are that brightly colored, but to get something that will grow in the, in the garden, I mean, this Persian shield is beautiful, but it doesn't show up in a distance, you know, unless it's kind of in the sunlight. So here we've got our Japanese anemones, pink coming up. They get a little bit of sun in, in the afternoon over the top of the house. So maybe they get two, three and a half hours of sun. I think this is Amazonian, I'm not sure. Anyway, this, this has been in here for about four years. Cause I take it in the house every, every winter. It's already done its gardenias this year. This was the poinsettia plant. All the red is gone. Ah, so here's our hay racks along the side of the house. We have the geraniums that are finally blooming a little bit. Of course, the white, between, white um, impatience have done fantastic. Oh. Now this tomato plant has not had a blossom and it doesn't look like it's gonna make blossoms anytime soon. But this one, that was a standard, kind of a standard size uh, tomato plant. But this one I got for the cherry, cherry tomatoes. And I don't remember if they, I got red or orange. But you see, I've got a whole, got lots of tomatoes on here. So we'll have, I love the smell of a tomato plant. With the rain and the heat that we've had over the last couple of weeks, all of our plants have just blossomed out. Look at this. This is, I think this is one plant. And yeah, these were, I saved these from last year. You know, I'm so particular about having exactly the right color of red and you know the growers don't always grow the exact same thing every every year so when you find something you really like you need to take cuttings to keep it and i just love this color of red these are um new getting impatience and i get sun across this along the length of this this um outside this kitchen door here. In the afternoon, the setting sun through the trees for maybe, well, it used to be four or five hours, but I think now because I have increased uh, tree canopy. Oh, there's a butterfly down in the. Can't see it. Um, because the tree canopy's gotten denser in the six years I've lived here. Um, my areas where I have sun for extended periods of time has diminished, which is an interesting little exercise. All my pots are sitting in water are getting way too, so, way too much. They don't need that much. They don't need that much water. They've just gotten soaked. See, that's the hazard of having things in dishes out here, but you know, I really wanted to save the deck from drainage from the plant. Well, I can come out and do that after you and I quit stop for the day. Anyway, this is the side of the mountain, about 10.30 in the morning. The sun's starting to bounce off of the leaves and now they look yellow on the trees. But you see, we're still in shade because of the side of the mountain, because of, of all the um, tree canopy. 
Well, there's a little bit of sun coming through in the front yard, but nothing, no, nothing direct. You can see where it's lighter. The green is a little bit lighter. We're starting to get probably about another hour or so, there'll be full sun coming across the hostas and the colliers and the impatience and the, and the, and the yard. Well, thank you for sharing this morning with me. It's been great fun.